Hello, fellow virtual aviators and aviation enthusiasts. Something a little different today, whilst I continue to work on more tutorial content. As some of you may know, I have been very ill recently, and as part of my recuperation, I have been forced to take it easy and de-stress. As part of this rest and relaxation, I took the opportunity of visiting the Northeast Land, Sea and Air Museums on the outskirts of the city of Sunderland for the first time. At the heart of this collection is the successor to the Northeast Aircraft Museum. This museum is a small, private collection of aircraft held in trust by a charitable organisation and staffed entirely by volunteers. The museum is famous locally for this example of an Avro Vulcan, XL319, the first Vulcan to be acquired by an independent private collection. The museum has a small outdoor footprint, currently displaying a number of classic airframes, including amongst others an English electric Canberra marked in number 7 Squadron RAF livery, a North American F-100D Super Sabre, and this Hawker Hunter. Sadly, the remnants of some of these classic aircraft are a little worse for wear, due to their age and the harsh weather of the local area. Thankfully though, a number of hangars and Romney huts house other, better preserved assets. Unusual helicopters such as this Saunders Row Skeeter and this Westland Dragonfly chart some of the early history of rotary wing flight. There are also good examples of a Westland Gazelle and this Westland Whirlwind HAR-9 shown here in Search and Rescue livery. The museum also houses a number of other military vehicles and artillery pieces. In particular, being interested in the history of the Falklands War, I was fascinated to find this Tiger Cat launcher in service with Argentinian forces and captured from Port Stanley just after the conflict. In the small hangar, a contrast of old and modern. Hanging high above us was this Moran Saulnier Type N bullet, Britain and France's answer to the Fokker Eindecker in the First World War. Below it, one of the aircraft I first fell in love with as a child, the Panavia Tornado, albeit an example of the sometimes maligned F3 or air defense variant. Also within this hangar is a recently acquired British Aerospace Hawk, a trainer aircraft I have always had a fondness for. In the main hangar is a dedication to the local number 607 squadron, which was based here when the museum's land was part of the RAF Usworth Air Base. The displays chart the history of the squadron, and there is also a mock-up of a Second World War street detailing the life and experiences of ordinary people during that time. The main hangar holds some excellent exhibits, one of my favourites of which is this British Aerospace Sea Harrier, ZD582, which is in excellent condition. The Sea Harrier is marked in its retirement livery from No. 801 Squadron Royal Naval Air Service, but is commemoratively marked with the badges of the four squadrons which served in the Falklands War. The Sea Harrier is paired in display with this FMA Pukara, A522, which was also captured at Port Stanley. Together they form a tribute to the daring pilots who served during the Falklands War on both sides of the conflict. Close by is a series of exhibits charting some of Britain's most famous early jets. Included are this Gloucester Meteor F8, a twin boom tail de Havilland Vampire, and this Hawker Hunter F51 in a rather snazzy Danish Air Force livery. But nothing tops the indomitable king of the interceptors this English Electric Lightning, in this instance a F-53 variant which served with the Royal Saudi Arabian Air Force.
There are also two well-preserved examples of important American jets. This North American F-86D Sabre served with both the US Air Force and the Hellenic Air Force over its history. The aircraft is marked in the livery of the Sabre Knights aerobatic team. There is also this F-84F Thunderstreak, which also served with both the US and Greek Air Forces. This example is marked in its Greek livery. For those interested in traction, the museum is also home to a collection of various classic transport vehicles, trucks and lorries, and cars related to the area. Sunderland is home to a large Nissan car factory, hence the small display here. Although I myself am not into cars, I particularly liked this Clan Crusader kit car, which was manufactured locally here in the northeast of England. The museum is the best collection of aircraft between Edinburgh and York I have visited, and is worth a visit if you are in the area for the very small entry fee I paid. The museum is small though, and sadly suffers from a lack of funds, relying heavily on the generosity of its volunteers to keep it going. Nevertheless, I enjoyed my afternoon there, and would certainly revisit the museum in the future. It was the first time I had seen an Avro Vulcan up close, and that in itself was worth the trip.